Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today's puzzle comes from Zeta Math, or Zeta Math, depending on how you like to say your Zetas and Zetas, and it's called Hydra, and that means, yes, it's all about snakes, and it's a quintessential problem regarding snakes touching themselves and each other and all sorts of things, and it has a 98% approval rating on Logic Masters Germany, which means it should be splendid. And in fact, only three stars out of five for difficulty. So also, hopefully, approachable. Uh, but I've got three quick pieces of news before we get started with this. The first and most important piece of news is that our brand new Arrow Sudoku app is now out on all platforms. Uh, we got the confirmation earlier on this afternoon that it has been released on Google Play as well as on the App Store and on Steam. So thank you so much, by the way, to all those of you who've written to us already to say that you're enjoying it. Um, we'd be most grateful if you do play it and you do enjoy it. Please do give it a nice review on whichever platform you brought it on. That does seem to help these sites to promote the game. Um, so that's exciting. Uh, secondly, if you are a patron of the channel over on Patreon, and if you've attempted uh, Matthias Martinka's incredible Build Your Own Sudoku Hunt, which we released about three weeks ago, then you may be interested to know that tomorrow we're planning to release a huge video series uh, in which we go through each and every puzzle of that hunt. Um, yeah, that, that's uh, that's going to be live tomorrow. It'll be available to all $3 and above patrons. So check it out. Um, now, finally... I have to eat humble pie and apologize to Joseph Neymar um, because of my complete numptiness in terms of solving his puzzle yesterday. Um, many of you, many thousands of you, unfortunately, have already spotted um, something that I failed to in this precise position right at the start of the puzzle yesterday. Um, so, you know, I, I went to the trouble of uh, locating some logic around these purple squares. I noted that the purple squares had to be the digits nine in column six and column nine. And then I said, yes, and this makes me want to look for a swordfish. And then I spent about three minutes hunting for the swordfish that exists in this puzzle, because I was sure it must be there. And I failed to find it, much to your amusement, um, because the swordfish is there. If, and I did in fact look at it, because you can see my cursor in the video looking, I, I did look at column two, but somehow, I don't know how, <laughs> I really don't, uh, I didn't spot the fact that the nine in column two can only go in those three cells. I blame, I blame this awkward 27 cage, this 27 cage foxed me, because... I think I failed to realize that the nine couldn't go in these two cells. But anyway, if I had have spotted that column two was restricted, I would have been able to then explain the swordfish logic that Joseph had built into his puzzle. And in fact, what I ended up having to do is it, in a, well, essentially sort of do the swordfish logic in a much more complicated way involving hypothetical putative X-wings. I don't recommend that. The swordfish was simpler. Uh, some of you in the comments did say, what what would it have meant if I'd found the swordfish? Well, let me just run through that very quickly. Um, if you get this sort of pattern in a puzzle where a digit is locked into the purple squares in three different columns, for example, the thing to realize is that it restricts the rows. And the way to realize this restriction exists is to ask very simple questions. So if I was to ask you how many nines appear in row nine, or sorry, not row nine, how many nines appear in row one of the correct solution to Joseph's puzzle, I'm sure you could all tell me the answer to that. There must be one nine in row one. There must be one nine in row four, and there must be one nine in row seven. So altogether, there must be three nines in these three rows of the Sudoku. But we know that column two is definitely providing one nine to those three rows. Column six is definitely providing a second nine to those three rows. And column nine is providing a third nine to those three rows. So that means you can't put any more nines in rows one, four, and seven, or you will have more than three nines. So if you, for example, were to try and put a nine in that 20 cage there, let's say we put a nine here, that has broken the puzzle because that is saying that there must be at least four nines in three different rows. And we know that's nonsense. And I know that's nonsense. And I would have been able to do that if I'd been cleverer. Now, 
What's the lesson we take away from this? Don't be a complete numpty, and especially don't be a complete numpty in videos that are seen by thousands of people. It doesn't do your mood any good. So sorry about that. And anyway, let's get on to Zeta Maths Hydra, where hopefully I will be able to put in a better performance. Let me read you the rules. So each row and column must contain the digits one to nine exactly once, and there are nine orthogonally connected regions in the grid that also contain the digits one to nine. So I think this is saying that there is that this is basically an irregular Sudoku where we don't know the shape of the regions. Um, each region takes the form of a friendly serpent, which is one cell wide, nine cells long, and does not touch itself even diagonally. Don't let your snake touch itself diagonally. Um, so that means we have to construct the regions of this puzzle out of snakes. So I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this could be a snake, for example. And then another, we'd have to put in another snake. Well, we're going to have to put in nine, nine of these snakes because every region has to be, has to look like a snake. It's got to be one cell wide and mustn't touch itself. So what we can't do is something like that. So let's say we got to this position with a snake and we were thinking about this snake's next cell. It couldn't be here because if it was here, this snake would definitely touch itself along this edge. In fact, it couldn't even do this because this snake touches itself at a point and that is not allowed either. We've got to keep our snake well away from itself. Ah, but let's also bear in mind that although our snakes, yeah, although our snake mustn't touch itself, it must touch other snakes. This is getting quite close to the bone. We've got to be very careful here. Um, and I'm mixing my metaphors in a very unfortunate way. But what we must not do is allow any snake we draw to touch its touch itself. But it, it but it is obviously going to touch other snakes um, as we draw those in. That's probably the wrong. No, that's the right length. So you know this would be an arrangement in which the purple and the blue snakes were touching each other. And indeed, we have to continue that until we filled the grid with nine of these snake-like regions. So that's what we've got to do now. There is more to the rules. Each serpent has a head and a tail, also to be de determined by the solver. Think of the head of the snake as its first cell, the next cell as the second, and so on. OK, so let's draw the snake in again. What's that saying? Four, five, that's the nine cell snake. So it's saying Think of, so imagine that's the head of the snake. I think it's saying this would be the first cell. This would be the second cell. This would be the third cell. This would be the ninth cell. Um, a cell in the grid is circled if the digit it contains matches its position in its snake. That is, the head is circled if it is a one and the tail is circled if it is a nine and so on. All circles have been given. Oh, good grief. Right. So, so we're going to have to draw snakes in the grid. And then the circles in those snakes contain a digit that corresponds to the position of that circle along the snake. This is incredibly complicated. How can this only have three stars? So let's let's draw a different snake because I've noticed that this snake is absolutely broken because it's got a one in the middle of it. So let's draw a different snake. Let's do a snake that does one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. That is a perfect snake because in this snake, you can see this is a circled cell and this will be the head of the snake and it contains the digit one. If this square had contained a circle, this would have had to have a this would have to have a four in it because it would be the one, two, three, fourth cell along the snake. This is a correct um, circle because it has a nine in it and it's the tail of the snake. So we can deduce that in this snake, this square would would have to contain an eight because this would be the eighth cell along this snake. And somehow we're going to have to use this restriction to finish the grid. That sounds very hard indeed. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play 
let's get cracking. So presumably we can say immediately that those three cells are in different snakes. And in fact, these are the three heads of their snakes because they are, they are circled ones. So we should probably label these with different colors. Let's do that straight off the bat. I'll make that one a bit darker. That's, that could be blue. Um, and the, the purple here can't connect to the nine because this, this nine is in the correct position on its snake. So we're not making short stubby snakes here. We've got to make nine cell snakes. And you can see that if we did manage to draw a nine cell snake, so I don't know if that's nine cells, it's probably not. No, it's not, it's an even number. But anyway, this would clearly touch itself orthogonally along this edge. So this is in a different snake to that. Right, okay, I can see something here. Well, I might be able to do something with this. I can see one of those squares has to be an eight because um, we know that, because we know this doesn't join to this snake, it must either be a snake that does that or a snake that does that. Either way, it's these positions are in the correct positions on this snake because they are circled. So they must be labeled with an eight. And, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, okay. So is this, is this the next cell along this snake? So does this snake do something like that? And the answer is no, because what on earth are we gonna do with row one, column nine, if we go this way with this snake? What is this square? What's its nature? The nature of this square is it is either the start or the end of a snake, and it has a circle. So it ought to contain a one or a nine, and it can contain neither. So this square would be broken. So this square is not an eight, which means that square is an eight. And it means that square is not the same color as this snake, and this snake does that, and then it must continue because it's, it can't be a short stubby snake. Um, now don't let the snake touch itself, so it can't take this square next, so it must continue. Now this square might be interesting. Yes, yes, yes. Look, this square sees one and nine. So can this be the head or the tail of the snake given it's a circle square? No. So it must be somewhere along the body of the snake, in which case it's it needs to turn. It, this needs to have a cell to both sides. So that this is forced. And that's gonna force this to come down, which, Oh no, it could, could that turn that way actually? Hang on. Uh, oh, maybe that, yeah, no, sorry. I was about to conclude that this purple had to come down here and hit a two, which it might do, but this possible, the purple and the blue are the same, isn't it? So I've got to be careful with my colors here. Um, but that doesn't matter too much because I can still extend the green. So the green snake is growing. One, two, three, four, five, um, six, seven, eight, nine. So the green snake is not part of the two snake because if the green snake hit this cell, this square would be in the first position and it contains a circle, so it should contain a one. I'm getting my head around this slowly, right. Now, so if this goes down here, that hits a circle, so this would be a two. If it goes this way, that would be a three. This square can't be blue, but could perhaps, no, actually that can't be red, can it? If that's red, red would have to, go in here and then it would have to end because it can't turn back and hit itself. So can that be green though? Oh, I don't know, maybe, I'm not sure. This might be a new color. 
Um, not sure. I'm not sure we know enough about that square. Um, what I am quite interested though in is cells, circled cells that see ones and nines can't be or must be partially along a snake. So that square has got to be partially along a snake because it does see one and nine. This square has got to be partially along a snake. This square has got to be partially along a snake. This square has got to be partially along a snake. So probably this square is interesting. Yeah, OK. So given this is partially along a snake because it can't be a one or a nine and it, therefore it can't be a head or a tail, we know that those three squares therefore must be forced. And if those are forced, what color are we using? We're using blue. So this square's got to be a two uh, in order to be co correctly positioned on the blue snake. Now the blue snake can't touch itself. So the blue snake must go forwards. This, this square now sees one and nine, therefore must be a, must be uh, must have a cell either side of it along the body of this snake. So we'll make those orange, um, which forces our blue up again. Ah ah, right. Now purple is blue, because this square, if this if this um, if the purple snake came to this square, it would need to have a two in it, and it can't now. So this one must go this way, in which case all of those squares have to turn purple. And this square is a three, because it's the third position along its snake. Beautiful. This square now sees one and nine again. So this is a, this is a corner. So those squares... Ah, uh, what colour shall I make those? Actually, yellow. Um, it's possible maybe that this, that blue is equal to yellow. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would be a seven and that would be an eight if yellow and blue were the same. If yellow and blue are not the same, this where has to be a head or a tail of a snake. So this would be the first or the ninth position. So yeah, this is lovely. Right, okay. So if this was the head or the tail of the yellow snake, and it would have to be, um, because because if if blue is not equal to yellow, this square can't this snake cannot take this square. So this would have to be either the first or the ninth position of the yellow snake. And this would therefore have to contain the correct digit for its position on that snake, which would be either the second cell, can't be that, or the eighth cell, can't be that. So this, this is not a head or a tail. Therefore, this snake must continue and become blue. So that is a blue snake. This is not blue anymore. Ah, forgetting about that for a moment. That means the blue snake. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a seven. That's an eight. And if we knew that was blue, that would be a nine. Oh, which we do. We do because it can't. The blue can't take that square. Sorry, that's just simple. Um, so not swordfish simple, but pretty simple. So that's we've done a snake. There we go. We've got a blue snake in the grid. Now purple can't take that square or it will touch itself at this point. So purple extends. That means our green snake is getting larger. Um, stop it. You and your dirty minds out there. Um, now, now this square looks interesting. Yeah, this square is interesting because what is this square? It's not red because that would create a very short snake and we don't want any short snakes. So this is not red, it's not purple, so that it must take those three squares and we shall make those squares 
yellow maybe so these are yellow that purple now has to extend green has to extend one two three four five six seven oh no hang on that's counting the wrong way round, isn't it nine eight seven six five four that's a three um now that's now known one two three four five that's got to be a six that must be purple so that's a seven this square must be green one two three ah oh, we know that's the third so this is the second position that can't be the first position so that's another snake done there you go another nine cell snake purple this is the seventh position and purple's got to extend again oh hang on have we made a mistake here no yellow can still take this square maybe um so this is the eighth position on the purple snake this square is either the fourth position on the yellow snake or the nine eight seven ah nine eight seven six it can't be the sixth position that's the fourth position on the yellow snake the red snake now has to jump down here i was about to say it looks to me like red has to be the same as orange but of course two three four five six seven it would actually work but i think it's possible that these squares could be heads or tails they're uncircled so they can contain any digit so if that was the first position second position third position fourth fifth would be okay as well four and five do go into the circles um okay so oh where does nine go in where does nine go by sudoku in row one of the grid well it's not it can't be it can't repeat in the green region so it must go there because here is a knowledge bomb two and nine are not the same digit so it definitely can't go in that cell um two nine uh okay so that two is in the correct position on its snake oh sorry right okay so yeah so where which is the first position of the snake that takes this two it can't be there because the snake's going to go up here turn and then it's going to have to touch itself which it mustn't do so that nine is actually um that nine is actually the correct first position although it hasn't got a circle so that must the nine two so it must take those three squares and it looks like it's going to have to take this one as well because otherwise it's going to touch itself so those four squares are forced um oh no yellow's bad that's juxtapose uh, ju ju jux oh, why can't i say the word juxtaposing it's juxtaposing green and yellow and it's putting this yellow uh, it's probable this yellow and this yellow will touch as well so that was a terrible choice of color apologies i will use red instead that's that's juxta juxtapositioning them in a much more appropriate way gosh deary me that reminds me of um what was i listening to the other day it was a story by stephen fry stephen fry who reads the audiobooks for the harry potter books and he was reading the first harry potter book and he had real trouble getting his tongue round the sentence harry pocketed it and he just couldn't say it he still can't say it he was like demonstrating how he would say harry po 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 pocket po pocketed it and, you know i can say harry pocketed it stephen fry can probably say juxtaposition but anyway uh he then rang jk rowling to say he was having real difficulty saying harry pocketed it and would it be all right if he changed the words slightly harry put, put it in his pocket or something and jk rowling said no and then jk rowling used the sentence harry pocketed it in every subsequent harry potter book in order to make stephen fry have to say it over and over again which i thought was quite a funny story and it's absolutely nothing to do with solving hydra by zeta math
but there we are. Now, let's, sorry, let me come back to this. One, two, three, that is in the correct position. That must be a four. The green one, I've even forgotten how long these snakes are. This is, this snake is done. Um, and it hasn't got a two in it. The green snake does not have a two in it. So that's a two by our old friend Sudoku using this two here. Now, this cell must be the head or the tail of a snake and it must take those squares. So that's a snake. And we'll make this great snake blue because that blue is definitely not going to touch this blue. And this square is either the nine, eight, seventh position, which it's not. There's a seven in the row. So it's the third position, one, two. The third position on the blue snake is here. And the fourth position is not there because if this snake did turn this way, this would have to contain a four because it's got a circle and it can't for a multitude of reasons. So that square has got to be blue, which means this square It might be red. If it was red, it would be a Luke Skywalker square because it would be a red five. Um, and it would be standing by. So maybe we can, we need twos, fives and sixes to complete row four of the grid. That cannot be a two. That cannot, ah, that this is a two. So this is a five or a six and it's correctly positioned on its snake. Right, so how can it not be red? That's a good question. If it's not red, red has ducked this way and gone there. And if it does that, this square is the head or a tail of a snake and it would need to be a one or a nine, which it can't be. So this is a Luke Skywalker cell. That is a red five standing by, which means this square is a six. And Right, so now, yeah, now red five, Luke Skywalker can't go into that square because if he goes that way, that's in the correct position on Luke Skywalker's snake. And Luke Skywalker knows therefore that this square is the correct snake extension he's looking for. This square becomes a six, um, which means blue must take another square. Green is completed. One, two. Purple. Purple is taking one of those two squares. Now, can we deduce which one of those is correct? If purple took this square, this would be this would be the start or end of a snake, but there are no circles to tell us whether that's correct or not. The snake could come out this way. If this was purple, these squares again, there's no circles. The circles are the really powerful bits of this, aren't they? So, uh, to cut a long story short, I'm not actually sure how we how we extend the snakes, how we grow the snakes in the top part of the grid. So maybe what we need to do does that say, yes ah right sorry this square sees nine it sees one so that's not a head or a tail of a snake which means it must be part of a continuous section. We can make that purple because that's well away from our purple snake at the top. Um, now, is this joining to blue is the question I'm asking. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't think it is because this would be a correct position, correctly position nine, therefore should contain a nine, which would clash with that one. So if blue doesn't connect to purple, blue's got to turn. Um, do we know whether one of the, do we know 
Is it possible? Oh, sorry, I'm being completely inarticulate. Is it possible that this is, or this is the head or tail of the snake? This one can't be. This sees one and nine. That definitely isn't a head or a tail, which suggests that that purple must extend um, because it can't take this square because purple must not touch itself. Now this square, if this is the head or the tail of the purple snake, it's a one. It would be a one or a nine if it was circled, which means this square would be a two or an. Uh, it can't be a two. This square could be an eight. That would then have to be a seven. Eight seven. Unfortunately, that looks possible. So that this square could be the head or tail of the purple snake. That's annoying. I was hoping if, if I could extend the purple snake to here, then I would know because the blue snake and the purple snake are different snakes, the blue snake would take that square and that would force the red square over. Oh, sorry, the red snake over. So that is no use. Um, right, okay. So how do we resolve this? Nine here. If it goes this way, this has to be eight, which unfortunately looks possible. If it goes up, this could be anything. We need one, three, seven, and eight to complete this. That square's a one or an eight, look, because it can't be three or seven. Is there a reason this can't be one or eight? The answer to that is, I don't think there's any reason it can't be that. This square has to be one, three, seven or eight, three, seven or eight, and it's correctly positioned on its snake. That still means this can be a, the first position. That's what we've just proved before. Oh no, that can't be the first position because that would be a two and clash, but this could be this could be the ninth position because it doesn't need to have a nine because there's no circle. Ah, bobbins. Ah, uh, um, right. Sorry, I'm stuck. What is a good question to ask here? Do we know what this yellow one does? If the yellow one went there, we would know the purple one would go here. Oh, good grief. Right. Okay. That is absolutely, this is vicious. This is viciously difficult. Right. The purple can't go here. Because if the purple went there, where would a two go on the purple? And the answer before, don't think you can put a two here. This can't be a two because it's the second position on the purple snake. And therefore, it sh if this was a two, it would need to be circled. So you can't put a two there. You can't put a two along there. And this two tells you you can't put a two here. So if you if if this was the last position of the purple snake, there's no place for a two on it. So I think that means this square is the only position that a two could ever go in on the purple snake and therefore it's purple. And that's going to be profound look because now the yellow snake comes out and this square is the head or tail of a new snake, which must go down there, make that one gray which forces red to continue, I think, which forces blue to continue. Blue and purple touch each other, but they are not the same. So blue must turn, red must turn, six, seven, eight. Red's got one more snake cell to take. Gray's got to take that square. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Blue, ah, can that be the blue nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, no. So blue must go another square. Red must go another square. Red is now finished because that's the sixth cell, seven, eight, ninth cell. Gray, ah, now gray, which is four cells, now has to be the same snake as yellow, which is five cells. So gray has become yellow like that. Oh, and that juxtaposition, juxt it does the juxta thinging with the green. I don't like that. Maybe I should change the yellow there. I'll change the yellow to 
uh, orange or maybe I'll leave it darker no I'll, I'll, I'll make a gray snake a slightly unhealthy looking snake there we go um, but what's going on one two three four five six seven eight right well this this is a new snake isn't it then the nine here so that's this new snake has to come out this way we can make that green that's never going to touch that green at the top that means the blue snake must go there it's now finished the red snake is finished the purple snake is not finished that's got a lot of growing left to do so that's got to come out not sure how many snakes I've got now. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are not two different snakes because if they, they aren't, yeah, they can't be, one of them must join to this is I suppose what I'm saying because otherwise I've got too many snakes in the grid. Or is that right? No, they could join to each other that's the other possibility these are not three separate snakes is what I think is the is the correct way of describing what's going on so purple has to continue One, two three four five six seven ah so hang on this was the head or the tail of the purple snake so it's it must be the ninth because we know we know we can't put a two in there so nine that's an eight that's a seven One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, purple is not the same as orange. Right, so what's this square? If this square is purple, the purple purple snake is incomplete because it could only have eight cells. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, you can't branch. So they can't have like, you know, we can't make it have two an antenna like these. That's not going to work. So this square cannot be purple. Therefore, it must be orange and now we know this is the head or tail of the orange snake one two ah so this is the tail of it because that can't be a three so that square oh no that this square is not a nine but this is the ninth position eighth position this is the seventh this is the sixth this is where we find we've got a seven or a six in clashing but we haven't so we probably correct that eight there we've done We've done all our circles now. That must be purple. That must be purple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Purple is done. Green has to extend. Four, five, six. Green has to come again. Seven, eight, nine. Oh, look. Right, that doesn't work. You can't attach green to red because then the last region is going to be an exceptionally naughty snake, which is going to be touching itself no, like bilio now don't let your snake touch itself like bilio don't create this snake so this snake is not red so it must continue one two th three four five six seven eight yeah so it's going to have that square as its ninth and then then we've actually learned that red and orange are the same snake so they can turn into red and that i think is the disposition of the snakes um that's very clever actually i love that and i've now got to do irregular sudoku and i've got to do irregular sudoku oh no that's not quite true actually because there's a negative constraint isn't there i've got to do regu irregular sudoku but i mustn't put digits in their correct positions on their snakes <laughs> so it's not quite simple um not that irregular Sudoku is ever simple, but it's it's not right. So where are we going to look now? This column, perhaps? Ones, threes and eights to place. That can't be. Yeah, where does three go in this column? It's got to go there because it can't repeat in its region. So this is a one or an eight. We can probably use the law of leftovers here. Let's do that um, because these three squares have to appear in the blue region so that these three squares here are the same as those three squares so there needs to be a nine in one of them 
a right and you can't put a nine at the end of a snake because it should have a circle so the nine goes there eight is definitely in one of those squares then eight is not constrained by the negative constraint um, okay what does that mean <laughs> does it mean anything useful uh, maybe this snake we could look at because we need to place one seven and eight don't we into this snake we've got six digits so these squares are one seven and eight this is interesting because where does seven go seven must go here uh, because it can't go there because there's a seven in the grid so we end up with a a one eight pair in this region but we don't know I don't think there's a way that the negative constraint is going to help us out there is there so we're going to have to look for something better which I don't know what that will be um, golly <laughs> uh, where should we look now we'll place a six yes we can place a six in row three using this six and the power of weird regions you can't have a six in any of those squares it would repeat this six rules six out of those two squares as well so there's only one place six can go is that useful um might be not sure what about what about row two we need one four five and eight oh oh gorgeous good grief where does one go in row two of the grid there's a one here so it can't repeat in its region now you might think we could put one there but we can't because of the negative constraint this would be the first position on its snake because this is the third position so that can't be a one and the one goes there which places an eight places an eight there just through the medium of the red snake um, now it feels like we've got quite a lot of eights in the grid all of a sudden how many eights have we got we've got six so the eight in the red region this red region is very constrained it's got to be in one of those two squares uh, the 8 in this region is not quite fixed. The 8 in... Oh, uh, no, the 8 in this region is in one of those two squares as well. Which ought to mean that we can... Let's just think about 8s again now. Yeah, okay. So we can now ask the question, where does 8 go in the grey snake? It can't go in those squares and it can't go in those squares because if it goes in these squares you'd have too many eights in either column six or column seven an eight can't go here because there's already an eight in those two squares so eight goes there uh, okay right small point about law of leftovers again we've looked at this already but this square now can only go in that position in the blue snake so those two squares are the same so let's compare and contrast what they can be so this square can be one two four or five i think which is a little bit uh, distressing that this square can't be a two so this square is one four or five. Oh dear um right okay so what next ah here's something easy we've got to put four in the in the purple snake and there's a four because of this four here you can't put four in those squares so this is a four eight pair which means that squares now a naked single that's a five 
That 5 sees those two squares by Sudoku, so now we're down to 1s and 4s. Oh, I was about to say we could use negative constraint. We can't. This is not the first position on a snake. It's the ninth position. 4, 8 here. Ah, oh, look, you can do the 4, 8. You, you can use this because 1, 2, 3. This cannot be a 4 because it would have a circle. So that's an 8 and that's a 4. Good grief. These two squares now are 5 and 9 to complete the, the purple snake. Now, yeah, now look, we've got sixes and fours in those positions. So these three squares in the grey snake have to be one, five and nine, which might be restricted. That can't be nine. That seems to be able to be anything. Um, this, this can't be five because it's in the fifth position on the snake. 1, 5, and 9 here. Right, now now our square 9 goes in the red region. It's not there, it's not there, so that's a naked single, that's got to be, a, or a hidden single, that's a 9. That gives me a 5 and a 9 up there. That means this is not 9, which means this is 9 now. That feels like it might be important somehow. This column has become very congested. We need twos and fours into this column. And there's a two here. That's a two. That's a four. Um, keep going. <laughs> what can we do now? We can. We can. I don't know what we can do. I don't know. Um. I'm not even sure where the best place to look here is. Eight. I've got an eight there now, so that must become an eight. Sorry, I think that's been sitting there for a few minutes. Now, let's have a look here. We need threes, fours, and sevens into this, uh, this row here. So this square is four or seven. No, it's not, because this is the fourth position on the snake. So this is a seven. That is an, uh, the strangest form of naked single. Now that means we need threes and fours into those squares. That, that's probably resolved by a negative constraint. Let us, it is, I don't believe it. Look, one, that, was, that, that would be three with a circle. So that's a four, that's a three. This column now needs fours, fives, and sixes. That's probably gonna be restricted by something. One, two, three, that can't be four, that can't be five. Um, so what do we need along this row? We need twos, threes, and sevens. Well, that's a naked single, that's a three, it sees two and seven. So this is a two, seven pair, and oh, it's, good grief, again, this cannot be the two. One, two, three, four, this would be in the second position. So that's a seven, that's a two. This is some setting, isn't it? It really is. Now, where does four go in column three? It can only go at the bottom. That fixes that, which fixes that, which fixes that, which fixes that, which fixes that. These two squares are a six and something, a uh, six and a five. Bobbins, uh, that doesn't seem to be resolved. Um, Hmm. Although maybe it is eight, seven, six. It is by the negative constraint. This is one, two. It is definitely in the fifth position of its snake. So that's a six. That's a five. So we don't bust open the negative constraint. That's now not a five. Therefore, this is a five through the power of Sudoku. Now we need twos and fours into those squares. Let's check whether they're at that one, two. Three. No, oh, I almost made a mistake. I saw this one and thought it was the first position of its snake. in its snake. It's not. This is the first position. So we can't use the negative constraint there. Um, okay, so ah, we can get these two squares probably. Threes and fives. Yeah, there's a five there. So that's a five. That's a three. This row still needs um, three and nine, which we can do. That's a nine. That's a three. This snake still needs two and five, which
which we can... Oh, no, I've broken it. What have I done there? That doesn't look good. I can't put a 5 in. Oh. Did I just miscalculate something there or not? I don't know is the answer. That does look like it's 3, 9. That does look like it's 9. That does look like it's 3. That does seem to mean... I need to put a 5 in one of those squares where I can't do it. Ah. This is a problem. Where have I gone wrong? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This column doesn't look wrong. If this 5 was incorrectly positioned, that would explain things. 1, 2, 3. That couldn't be a 4. One, two, three, four. That couldn't be a five. Which plonks the five up here. Um, wow, that's mysterious. What have I done wrong here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh dear, this is not looking good. One sixes and sevens. That's a six by Sudoku. These are ones and sevens. Don't think that's... So something's gone wrong at the bottom. That is the first position. Six, seven. I definitely haven't put three and five into that box. So that this looks right to me. Assuming this is right. So unless I've made a mistake in this column, which I could well have done. But I can't see where that mistake is. If this 3, 5 was the other way round. I mean, the, the problem here is there's just nowhere to put 5 in this region. So one of the 5s that I've got is wrong. One, two, three, four. That cannot be a five. Which means in this column, unless there is a second mistake, this has to be a five. Oh, I've got two fours in this region. That's what I've done wrong. Right, let's go back. Apologies. How far do I have to go back? Oh, Simon, you are... S I must have just... It looks like I ju it's just a missed... Um, like I just did it too quickly, did I? I did. I just did it too quickly. I didn't spot that I was doing something wrong. That's so silly. Anyway, I think we can just continue with our logic now. Well, although actually, no, I need four in that column now, not five. So that's a four, six pair. That's review. This is changing the logic a bit. It's giving me a four here rather than a five there or something. Um, but we should still be in reasonable shape and at least I haven't broken the puzzle quite as badly as I feared. Now, 4, 2 must go in those squares now. Um, I have not put a 2 look in green. So there's a 2 in one of those two squares. I've got 3, 5 and 9 to place along here. I've no idea if we can restrict that. I can see the 9's restricted. And that can't be a 3. That is in the third position. This can't be a 9. So this is the 9. This, this, this is a 3-5 pair. But it's a 3-5 pair that we can't resolve anymore. Because we don't know what this is. Um, no, we don't know what that is. So we're going to have to think harder now. What do we need across the top? We need 1-6s and 7s. So this is a six, that logic was good before, which I think means those two squares are ones and sevens. Let's have a look at those three squares, which have got to be one, five, and six. Yep, that's a five. 
this is a six, this is a one, lovely. This one fixes the one and the seven, also lovely. This square now has to be a seven, which is super. And now, what do we need to do along here? Looks like it's, oh, this six is fixing stuff. Twos and fives go in. Those two squares are a two, three pair, which doesn't seem to be resolved. Um, so we just need, what do we need? Twos, threes, and fives along here as well. So that's a two or a three. That's a two, three, or a five. There's a two, three here. So this square's become a five. That's become a three. That's become a five. This has become a five. And we're left with a two, three deadly pattern resolved by the fact that this cannot be a two because it would be in the correct position in this snake. Good grief. So that's a double three. That's a double two. And that is how to finish this incredible puzzle by Zeta Math. Good grief, that was difficult. That's three stars, is it? Well, I think, I mean, there's so much logic there to admire. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful puzzle. It really is. And the hardest step, if you don't make a mistake, for me, was that region. This two, that is a monster two. And we needed that to sort of get, get going again and create our grey snakes, etc. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments how you got on and hopefully I've not made too many rickets in today's solve and see you later on Cracking the Cryptic.